the Moors, it is called, and you can look it up, all you have to do is put in Moorish, Moorish Spain. That's what it's called, Moorish Spain. Now, the Spaniards had a name, another name that, and I think I remember it. Morin. Morin, connecting the dots. By 1492, evidence says they were calling them Morin. And in that language, it means not Christian. Not Christian. So if they were not Christian in the beginning, what were they? Because I'm telling you, Islam didn't come into place until Muhammad went away, did his study, took the Bible, he rebelled against the Catholicism that was being pushed on all the people and said, I need to look at this a little closer and understand. So he goes away and goes and stays in a cave and it says for quite some time and he reads and he's writing his memoirs and then when he comes out he publishes them and he teaches them. So just kind of do the math. Um, if I remember correctly I'm just going to say 620s. No, 625, he died. So it was probably less than that. But um, by this time, he was well motivated in touring and spreading his word. By 711 AD, a general of the Moorish Spain army believed enough in this that he now took up the helm and started using the, using the army to convert people by force. So, let's look at it once again. If they were being converted to Islam, for rebelling against Christianity, what was the other thing left? Judaism. Judaism. Right. And not what we see as Judaism today, because Judaism today is more a religion that we see today. Right. But <coughs> just I just wanted you to see the point. Just kind of look at some traces. Alright? So the Catholic Church came in with the contract saying we're going to deliver to your country, to whatever people who, who will pay the price, 144,000 black slaves, 48,000 per year for 30 years. Okay, We have 30 years to fulfill that number. Where else have we seen that kind of a number? In Revelation? The 144,000? Traces of evidence? All right. Now, let's, let's look at the last part and I'm ready to go into the scripture and start uh, looking at scriptural evidence. Um, go to number five. Moors are not a distinct or self-defined people. Medieval and early modern Europeans applied the name primarily to Berbers, but also at various times to Arabs, <coughs> uh, Muslim, uh, Iberians, and West Africans from Mali and Niger, um, who had been absorbed into the Almoravid, 
Almoravid dynasty. Mainstream scholars observed in 1911 that the term Moors has no real ethnological value. Did you hear that last part particularly? The term Moors have no real ethnological value. They don't know who they are. They just label them. And who was this that labeled them? It was the English people. With the attempt to identify these people, who were they? They were Arabs. They were Iberians. West African, Nigerian, and another part, oh, here it is, um, in, in part four it says, Berbers, Black Africans, Arab descent. So in other words, let's just put it in one term, people of color. <laughs> So if it's people of color, they can't identify them. And the scripture also gives us evidence of a people who could not be identified. Can anybody remember who they are? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, if you will turn with me to the book of it starts with an O. O Obadiah. Obadiah. <laughs> All I can see was the O. <laughs> Obadiah, I believe, will help us really, really understand something about these people who could not be named and this is today's people whom they like now I'll tell you the extent of what they they have done to to identify these people they use DNA today and what they have tracked is that there are so many of them that they they went into Africa and they can see a great number of them are of this, this group, and a great number of them of this group. I saw one that said like 68% of them that we tried in this area are of the Moors group, and you know, they could not identify them. Now I'm going to tell you, the Moors today, and there is a big move of the Moors here in the United States that have been going on for years. We just haven't heard about it. So much so that they have declared sovereignty as a people. That even our legal system cannot bother them. They have declared themselves sovereign in this nation. Today, take down the shops. They're taking out of them. Oh. I'm telling you, there's there's a lot of move that's going on in the U.S. for people of color starting to create communities. I've had, um, like myself, we've had invitations for even our group to be named on a um, website as a people of contact. And I have not agreed to it as of yet, and I probably won't until, uh, and I probably really won't because there is a divide. We worked with them for a year where um, they're more, they, they, I'll just say we, we, we kind of sever um, ties on Yeshua, basically. Right. Right. And, and that's, I'll just leave it there. Um, they're waiting for Yahweh. They're waiting for Yeshua, not Yahweh. They don't see him as Yeshua yet, but we see him as Yeshua. Right. So that was my hesitation with that. Let me move on. Um, 
but it is a big move, and they're they're starting to locate cities and naming people and 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 jobs and different things, people that they have, and um, and doing a um, like a. If you're in this area, you can go to this group or these people, whatever. But there's a big move going on, and, and they. I'll say this, and, and I'll stop with that point. They even have declared themselves uh, monetarily free from this country. They have seized, and I have to be careful with this part, they have seized uh, funding that the United States is, uh, as, as it's known, the um, power of attorney. They have seized that and taken it back. Um, uh, what do you call it when the person is like, it's power of attorney, but it's, they are the executive, executive it's something like that, but it's, it's another word, but that's okay. They have to trustee, and this is the way it's documented that they're trustee over a certain fund. Well, these people have gone into court and denied even the judge to speak in their behalf and taking control of their finances that even the United States were the treasurer trustee over certain funds. And I'll leave that alone. Okay. Now, Obadiah. Uh, let's look at some portions of Obadiah. In the vision of Obadiah, this is what the uh, Master Yahweh said concerning Edom. We have heard a, a report from Yahweh and a messenger has been sent among the nations saying, Arise, and let us rise up. Raise, rise up against her for battle. See, I have made you small among the nations. You are greatly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You who dwell in the cliffs of the rock, who dwell is high, who dwelling is high, who said in your heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Those shall, though you rise high as an eagle, as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I shall bring you down, declares Yahweh. Here we can see that this is a message to Edom. This is a prophecy that has not been fulfilled yet. Why so? Let's continue. Verse 7. All your allies shall send you forth to the borders. Your friends shall deceive you and overpower you. They make your, your bread a snare unto you without you discerning it. In that day, declares Yahweh, I shall destroy the wise men from Edom and the discernment from the mountains of Esau. So let's see, who is Edom? Edom is the lineage of Esau. Esau is the, the, the rival to uh, uh, I, uh, Jacob. They are the twins. Two nations shall come from you, and they are warring. So now, what is the prophecy of Edom? Um, you don't have to go there, but I'll just call it Isaiah, and I because I read it a lot. Um, Isaiah 63, and if you, if you choose to look, you can. Isaiah 63 talks about what is going to happen in the future. This is when Yahweh comes, and it says, Who is this coming from? Edom with his garments are red. And the answer is, it is I. And then later on, later on he says, it is I who can save. Mm -hmm. So we know exactly who it is. It is Yeshua who comes and 
he is the enemy of Edom. He destroys Edom. But here it kind of tells us what happened and why. So, chapter, verse, um, verse 10. Because your violence against your brother Yaakov let shame cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. What does that mean? Cut off forever. That's it. So we can see by um, by deduction that this has not happened yet, because. It is futuristic, and Edom, the lineage of Esau, has not ceased to be with us at this point.